All right, in the previous video, I showed you how to use the uh, gradient boosted trees from the library of sklearn in order to train and uh, evaluate a gradient boosted uh, tree. In this video, I'm going to show you another method of doing that outside of sklearn, and that is through XGBoost. Uh, the uh, advantages of the XGBoost over the gradient boosted trees function within the sklearn library is the fact that it is optimized for parallel processing, uh, which means that if you're dealing with a very large database that uh, takes a long time for sklearn to process uh, for the gradient boosted uh, trees, you can use XGBoost and that will give you very quick uh, results uh, uh, with the same level of accuracy, if not higher. And uh, the very first step to do that is to go and actually install XGBoost package through Anaconda uh, command prompt. Uh, while the gradient boosted classifier was already installed as a part of uh, Anaconda and uh, Jupyter installation on your machine, you have to go ahead and install the XGBoost uh, XGBoost package separately because it's not a part of XJ, uh, Scalar. So to do that, go to your programs and uh, type in Anaconda prompt, uh, and this will open. And as you can notice, I'm using a Windows machine. If you're using a Mac machine, uh, it's uh, just a terminal. Uh, so type in on Anaconda, type in Anaconda prompt until this prompt window opens. And once it opens, you can type in pip install xgboost. And uh, in my case, it's already installed, so I, uh, it doesn't show the downloading and installation process. But in your machine, if you're doing for the first time, then you will see that uh, the computer starts downloading and then installing this uh, this package. Once you have done it, you can just close it and come back to Jupyter. Now I'm going to use the same data set and the same file on which I was training my decision tree and uh, random forest tree and also the uh, gradient boosting uh, classifier. Uh, so I'm just going to continue off of that file so that we can compare the results and the performance of these two models. So I'm going to start by typing in import xgboost as we call it xgb and run it to make sure that uh, there is no errors. If you see any errors here, it's probably because it was not installed properly. So make sure that you follow the previous step to, uh, to make sure that you're correctly uh, have this xgboost package installed for you. Now, the other variation between how we uh, prepare our data for XGBoost function versus the other uh, machine learning algorithms in sklearn package is the fact that we have to basically merge the features and the labels data set for training and testing uh, back again. So if you can remember, we had an X train and Y train and then X test and Y test. Uh, basically, we had split our initial data set into two, four parts. Here, we need to merge them back so that we only have two parts of testing and training. And that is done through the matrix function within the XGBoost package. So you go ahead and type in train equals XGB dot D matrix and then give it the uh, X train and Y train data frames that you've already created uh, before. So I just type in X train and then I type in label equals to Y train. And by the way, this code and also the code for the previous parts are available in the link uh, in the description in the video. And I do the same thing for testing. So I'm just going to copy and paste here. So instead of train, I'm going to create a test, which is going to be consisting of the X test and Y test 
data frames. And you can see that it runs beautifully. There is no, uh, no errors. Now, the uh, one other thing that we can do here is that rather than specifying different parameters uh, within the function as uh, the way that we were doing it before for, say, gradient boosting classifiers, see that we define learning rate, maximum depth, and random state separately, we can come and create basically an array that consists of these parameters uh, before training our model. So I'm going to create uh, params and say that it contains of these features. So I'm just saying to say max depth uh, is equal to three and then eta, oops, sorry, it should be like this, eta is equal to 0.1. And remember, eta is uh, equivalent to learning rate. So again, within sklearn, the uh, gradient boosting classifier had uh, the parameter learning rate rather than calling it learning rate in XGBoost we call it eta all right and don't forget to put a comma after these and the other thing that I'm going to define here is objective I say it's equal to binary hinge all right, why did I choose binary hinge objective? It's because the classification I'm doing here is binary classification. Again, remember, it's on the heart disease data set in which the outcome is either with heart disease or without heart disease. It's zero or one binary, right? So that's why I use binary and I use hinge because I want it to give me the actual classification rather than the probability. In other words, the algorithm is going to come up with the probability for each of the two outcomes. I want it to give me the outcome with the highest probability. That's why I go with binary hinge. If you have other types of classifications, for example, uh, when you have more than two classes of classification, then you have to change your objective uh, accordingly. For example, there you could use multi-class uh, objectives. And if you go to the user manual of XGBoost, there is uh, detailed discussions about various objective functions uh, that are available and you have to choose them according to your needs. And then the other thing that I can define here is basically the number of uh, iterations uh, through epochs uh, and I choose uh, say 100. And that is basically how many times I want this algorithm to run, right? So. Once I've defined these variables, and by the way, I'm going to run it just to ensure that there is no errors or anything I'm right, uh, I have to basically start training my model. I'm going to say xgb.train, right? And then I have to give it the parameters rather than typing each of these individually. I'm just going to type in params, and then I have to give it the name of the training data set based on which I want to train it. I've already defined it, it's called train, so I give it train, and then the number of iterations is already in epochs, so you just type in epochs, right? So when I run this, it is going to uh, train the model. I'm going to put it in something that I will call it XG B, say, model is equal to this, so that then I can go and uh, predict things with it. So let me put it in this, uh, object I call XGB model is equal to XGB dot train parameters train and epochs and then I can run my model and there is no errors or anything now you can actually see how your model uh, is going to work by using the predict function so you can go ahead and type in XGB model dot predict what do you want to predict? You want to predict uh, based on the testing data set. That's why I just typed in test. And if you run it, it will give you just an array that consists of the prediction that it has made 
for you and you can see that they are only zeros and one because you have a binary classification right it's not a clean way of uh, representation so i'm just going to put in in the new object and just call it uh, say let's say xgb uh, predictions is equal to this and run it again so that you know this output is going to be saved within this object and uh, now, one thing that I want to do is to basically see how well uh, my uh, algorithm performs in terms of its accuracy. And to do that, I can go ahead and import the uh, accuracy score from Scalar. So I just type in from scalar.metrics import accuracy rate. And then, once I've imported this, I can basically score uh, anything that I want. And here, I want to score Y test against the predictions, right? So basically, this accuracy rate function has two inputs. Uh, the reality or the ground truth here is Y test. This is the correct answers. And uh, the predictions that we've made, which are stored in this uh, array, XGB prediction. So what it does is that it goes and looks at uh, these two data sets, compares them with each other, and sees, uh, and basically calculates the percentage of time that we have made the correct predictions. And we run this. Let me see what's the error about. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, it's not accuracy rate, it's accuracy uh, score. So the correct name of the function is accuracy score. So I put in accuracy score, I run it again, and then it will calculate the accuracy for me, which in this case is 83%.